Okay. It says uh, now streaming live on custom live streaming service. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Yes. So this is the, the pilot yep. episode of the Recommendo Show and Tell. Yes. Welcome, all you people. All the all the chat. <laughs> Welcome, chat. And um, there's three of us. I'm Kevin Kelly. There's I'm Mark, Mark. Brownfelder. I'm Claudia. And the three of us produce Recommendo, and we're going to experiment with doing a live version of stuff that we recommend. Not necessarily yeah. the same stuff in the newsletter, but maybe even broader. And um, we don't know what we're doing. We're just trying stuff. <laughs> if you're watching this one, it's because it's been recorded. We'll also have those available. But um, if it does work, we'll try to do this on a regular basis. Um, and what we're going to do is just talk about things that we find interesting and want to share. And um, uh, that's about as far as we know. So um, Mark, I know, always has really interesting things. And so um, Mark, what do you have to show us? All right. So this is, uh, oh, I should just mention it is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. Um, yes, the revenge of the fifth. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a special Star Wars day. Um, After the May, May the Fourth. May the Fourth. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, so this is something that I bought probably five or six years ago on Amazon at a greatly reduced price because it was discontinued. And let me bring up my screen share here so you can take a look at it. Um, do you see that? Yes. Okay, so what this is, is it's an offline Wikipedia um, encyclopedia. And you can see it's wow. small, it's battery powered. It has uh, an SD card in there where you can download um, a snapshot of the latest uh, version of Wikipedia. It's text only, but the, the great thing is that you don't need an internet connection. I'll just turn it on like this. It take, it's very slow. But uh, it works just like regular Wikipedia. So let me uh, type in Kevin. Oops. We'll do Kevin's name. <laughs> and let's see here. Oops, I misspelled. It's hard because <laughs> I'm typing in it sideways. Let me, uh, let me get that. Um, And I'm not wearing my glasses either. So uh, it, as you can see, the touch screen isn't <laughs> that great. And there's actually, I, I have a follow up to talk about. Um, Do you know when this came out? I think it probably came out like seven or eight years ago. Okay, so Kevin Kelly, um, and I will just type in, I'll just, whoops, the wrong Kevin. Kevin Kelly, American football. That's not you. Right. Let's see. Let's do Kevin Kelly, editor. Right. Okay. And so it takes a little while, but it kicks up and it says, Kevin Kelly, born 1952, is a founding executive editor of Wired Magazine and former editor publisher of the Whole Earth Catalog. Right. He has also been a writer, photographer. So that's Kevin right there. Um, what I heard was that people... Uh, buy these, you can still find them on eBay, probably 30 or $40, I got it for 10, but they do it when they're like traveling in China or some other place where they're out in the middle of nowhere, Mongolia, where it's remote and there is no internet and they can find out about population sizes, sure. um, tons of great information. I mean, it's all of Wikipedia is on there. So, it's but pretty what, incredible. It, Mark, is it the Wikipedia of seven years ago? It is. Just because um, I've been too lazy to update the latest snapshot, but I could do that. You could do that. Okay. Because there also is um, a version of Wikipedia offline that is, is available for both your phone or for your laptop. That's right. So that is you, right. And that's like, so you could just download much more it. practical. You, you could download a version of Wikipedia and put it on a laptop um, or mm -hmm. a phone. 
And I know several people who do that and they do that, as you said, for traveling in remote places where they always want to have Wikipedia. Um, the one on the phone is, is a bridge that doesn't have any pictures. It doesn't have, it's just the text, only the text. Yeah. And I think it might even be a bridged version of it, but um, uh, that's another option in addition to this. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. How much did you pay for The it? other cool thing is it has a random, $10. It has oh, wow. a random button. And oh, so wow. uh, you can just hit random and let me see what it brings up here. Um, by my side, oh, Tony Robin is an American artist and author who works with painting, sculpture, and computer visualizations. He is considered part of the pattern and decoration art movement. I think the, I'm not that to of, me would be the most valuable thing about it is just... Uh, uh, Hit that every every morning and just you know or every evening if you wanted to write about something I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, so the, what got, so I started getting interested in how this worked and everything, and I realized that making one of these wouldn't be that hard to do. And so I've been talking to John Park, who we've had on a few times, um, about making a Raspberry Pi version with a color touch screen, and we, you could have something with a much better screen the same size package, but uh, uh, you know, you could, with today's SD card, you could probably get some of the graphics in there too. And so that's uh, just a long-term project. You know, it, it involves like creating the interface and the random button and all that, but I don't think it would be that difficult to do. It's a fun project to, to work on. I wonder if you could make an Alexa interface to it too. That's a great idea. So you, it's just ask, ask your box and it's all yeah. on and you could even travel with it. And it's just like, a, maybe it's like a little stick or something that you ask it. Yeah. That's such a cool idea, Kevin. I love that. I don't know if, if there's a, like an API for Alexa or Google home that uh, would let you do that, but it sure seems like there should be. Right. There should be. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, that's cool. All okay, right, cool. and, and, and uh, do you remember what it's called, Mark? Yeah, it's just called the Wiki Reader. The Wiki Reader. The Wiki Reader. Yeah, and I'll have a link to it. There's actually the website for it is still live, mm -hmm. even though this thing has been discontinued for years and years. Mm -hmm. And how do you download the cur most current version? You just uh, do you plug it into your computer? Um, you just take the little pop the little SD card out and put it in your uh, in your computer. All right. Yeah. So, so there's, 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 it must use the same downloadable version to put on your phone or um, yeah. laptop. Yeah. Um, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So Claudia, tell us what you have. Yeah. Mine is, um, it's also old. I think it's from 2004. It came out in 2004. This is my knee. I'll hold it up. This is my Neo 2 Alpha Smart word processor. And I just found out that when it, uh, when it came out in 2004, it was $250. I bought it for $35 um, and I use it as my journal. I go outside and I sit and I write my morning pages and it will hold eight files. So at the end of the week, I connect it to my computer and then upload everything I've written. That is cool. And so, the, 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 me, the, the advantage for those who don't know is that it's not connected. It's not connected. It's a distraction free writing device. Um, I had been wanting one of those free writes. I don't know if you guys have seen them, but they're like $400. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I haven't wanted to spend that much money. Right. So I was looking for alternatives. And then I found this blog post that said, Amazon has a bunch of used, mm -hmm. um, used versions of these. I don't know if this, if there's multiple, if there's other editions or, or newer ones. Um, no, I don't think this is, newer one. what, this, is the, turn, this, this is the Neo 2. Yes. Right. Can you turn it on so you can see there's a screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the contrast is so really is it good. An LCD, I can see it. It's an LCD screen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to tell what an LCD screen is. Oh, yeah. It, it's a very dim, pixelated, um, yes. yeah, like that kind of a screen. 
Probably similar to the one on the wiki reader. Yes. Yeah. Right. I can sit outside though, like in the sunlight and right. be able to read what I'm writing and I can see, you know, four lines at a time, which is enough. Okay. And it runs just on some re rechargeable batteries too, right? I think. Yes, like AA batteries, batteries. three of them. I don't yep. think I'm using rechargeable batteries, but. You will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's cool. So, so I have a couple of things to show. W one um, is um, I got these really cool um, specimens of Got this flying frog specimen, dehydrated flying. Frog. Oh my god! Oh, it's like a real frog. <laughs> it's a real frog, and it's from um, Borneo. But what's cool is I, I, I get these little Riker boxes that are made for um, the tentacle mm, specimens, zoological specimens, and the way it works mm -hmm. is that there's a that fluffy, it's white, fluffy, kind of like almost foam, and it presses up mm -hmm. again. So it's very easy to mount these. And I have another mm. couple samples I'm going to put in. I'm writing some labels. But these Riker boxes are very inexpensive, and they're really great for, it's like kind of what museums used to use for butterflies or shells and things. Yeah. They, they pin apart, and then they press up against, they press the specimen up against the glass. And um, so that's my little project. Oh, that's really you cool. said you said you got it, but where where did you get it from? Oh, I got here's another one. I got a. <laughs> I, I I just I got them on Etsy. Oh. Somebody imports them from Indonesia. This is this is a this is a flying lizard, a yellow flying lizard, and it, they're dehydrated and dried out. And they're they're not expensive, but they're really beautiful beautiful specimens. Um, you can see the web feet on this guy. That's oh my amazing. Gosh. A, so that so helps red, them the red, glide. Flying red-legged frog from Kalimantan, Borneo. Yeah. That is beautiful. Um, so um, the thing I wanted to show though was I got some really cool, I have three of these. Um, I'll start with the coolest one. These are invisible people that are 3D printed, but they're 3D printed mm. in color and transparent. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Isn't so it's, that? It looks like it's like resin or something. Yeah, it's, I think it's a resin printed thing. That's cool. The detail is unbelievable. Oh my God. And um, it's just utterly gorgeous. This is the best invisible man I've seen anywhere. Yeah. Where did and, you get it? And what's cool is that you can get other variants of it. Here is the invisible lady, and she's got half skin. Wow. Um, and that is amazing. Even cooler is the muscle. Whoa. That's like that museum exhibition that yeah. travels around. But the detailing on the muscle here is just amazing. And these are 3D printed? Yes. Whoa. Such great quality. I know. Look at that. That is incredible. So what's your, what's your source, Kevin? It's called Mixed Dimensions. It was a Kickstarter um, campaign. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they're, they have different sizes. This is kind of like an intermediate size. I think there's a size bigger and a size smaller. And you can, you can choose the gender. You can choose the position. You can choose what do you want to see, skeleton, muscle, or skin. And you can choose the ethnicity. I mean, it's like you can kind of customize it mm -hmm. in many, many different ways. Are they like print on demand? Basically. How, how much do they cost? I think they're probably, this one's probably like $100. Oh. 
I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. recollecting. I think if you buy a bunch of like three of them, they're, they're yeah, they're, there may be a discount. So, and then the last thing I want to show is I have a prototype of my book, which I oh. bound. I bound the other That's day. That's so cool, Kevin. Is Look that, at how beautiful. That's humongous. That read in the right. Um, can you read that? Yeah, yeah I can read it. What I see is I see it backwards. That's really weird. No, yeah, because it shows its mirror to you because you're more comfortable looking at a mirror. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I make <laughs> that? Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, so so I hand bound this one. This is about the thickness of it. It'll be twice as big. The page size is twice this. Oh my God. Um, and That's this is so cool. This is the, uh, yeah, it's sort of. Wow. But the real book will be all color. Yeah. You should say. This is just the black yeah. and white version. That's cool. Okay. Kevin, did you have trouble binding it so that the pages wouldn't fun? Well, tell, tell us how you bound it and made this because so it's pretty cool. Way, yeah. So, so the way I do it is I made some cardboard covers and I clamp it together. Mm -hmm. And then I glue, I apply glue on this edge and then I apply cloth. I cut an old sheet, make a cloth. But wait, wait, like just Elmer's white glue? Yeah. Okay. So cloth. Cloth mm -hmm. and glue. And then, um, then, I, then I drilled holes with a drill and, and a drill mm -hmm. press here, through it at, while it was clamped. And then I sewed it with fishing line. Hmm. Under here. And then this is the end papers, mm -hmm. which are, this is glued here and this is free and glued right here. And then, um, then I put the cardboard cover on, then I put, this is just duct tape. That's so cool. It works very well. It's very close to what they would do. Mm -hmm. Finding it um, for real. Um, that is amazing. Right. So anyway, so this is being sent to the binders to show them the right uh, page order. Oh, okay. So there's a copy here, and then there's this thing, and then there's the, the opening spread. And Did you do all the layout yourself? Oh, yeah. And then there's captions. You can't see it, but there's captions at the bottom of every image. Oh, yeah. Every, every wow. image is numbered. And every image has a caption. Oh, that's amazing of them. Wow. And so <laughs> this is, uh, who's the publisher for this? Oh, we don't know yet. I'm hoping that's going to be Tashin. Who did your other yeah. Asia book? Yeah, I'll, I'll mail them yeah. the final prototype book. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Very yeah. cool, Kevin. Yeah, so um, that'll be coming out maybe later this year. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to show? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'll show one other thing. Um, let's see. Let me do my screen share again. Last time you did the screen share. Yeah. Okay. Good. You can take out that. Um... Oh yeah, that the little recording bug. Yeah. So this one is uh, something that I have. Like, uh, it's weird because I love it. I use it all the time. It's it's the best uh, tool of its kind that I know of but I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain why. What it is, is it's a nail clipper. And oh, I've been wanting one of these. <laughs> it's called a clip, K-H-L-I-P. And it's, you can get a ton of leverage because of the way this clip works. Um, and I, I purposely didn't cut my nails for a couple of days so I could show you how easily and cleanly it clips. And it just does a fantastic job of clipping nails. Um, super strong. I've had it for years. I love it. The reason I cannot recommend it is because it costs $75. But it That's catches your money. nails, right, Mark? Is it um, catching your... It doesn't your... catch them. They just drop out. Oh. It just, it, just, it just has great, great, super strong, uh, super sharp uh, uh, blades that have never needed sharpening. It's great. Um, maybe, here's what I would recommend. If you want to get 
a gift for somebody. Then it would be, but would I buy this for myself? I wouldn't. I, I received it as a review unit. Um, and I, I like it a lot. I use it all the time. But $75 is hard to justify. I wonder if you could modify an existing nail clipper to get that extra leverage. That would be interesting. It makes all the difference because typical ones have a lot of bend and then all of a sudden they clip. It's like, so, it's, so not, I can't it's not quite, a pleasant feeling. I can't quite see it, but if you hold it up or look closely, could you see how you could modify? Uh, it's too high. If you can you move that okay. down. Oh yeah. Um, could, could you do I wonder a way in which you would modify an existing potentially um, let's see. That's a great, that would be a great project. If anyone right. sees this and has an idea of how to make that work, it's, it's, you know, you're just getting a tremendous amount of leverage. That's, that's what's going on here. Right. Um, and just, it's very comfortable and has well-designed, um, like I said, probably the best nail clipper ever made. When, do they have used versions? That's a good question. Would you could just sterilize? Yeah, exactly. Why not? Or they should no. just yeah. soil it for two days and then. <laughs> no. If this if this were thirty nine ninety nine, if they could get the price down to that, yeah, I would tell people buy it. Okay. I said get this thing immediately. All right, so that's my second pick, and uh, I have one more thing now. But yes. Let me let me stand up to grab oh, it. Sure, sure. <laughs> Oh, whoa. So I got this on eBay, I think maybe five years ago, six years ago. I paid a hundred dollars for it. <laughs> it. They said it was from the, it's Victorian taxidermy. And I think it's, they say that because it's just so poorly <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 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 what I call my stuff, Victorian. Yeah, Victorian taxidermy. Um, the guy I bought it from said it was a twin. There were a set, oh. and he told me, and he this wasn't in the ad, so this is why I believe him because he sent me a separate email after I already purchased it, so I had already paid for it, so it wasn't a selling point. He said to me, he's like the uh, the other owner of your twin is Anne Rice. And I also cool. believe him because it was coming from New, New Orleans and she lives there. And she said, and he said, Ann Rice was one of my, was my next door neighbor. And she has the other one. Oh, and wow. I've tried to email her twice with pictures of, <laughs> of Iggy. <laughs> I this name, his name is Iggy. Uh, so I've tried to email her twice and reach out to her to verify that we have twin iguanas. But um, she never responded. So, oh, that's this is Iggy. Okay, that, that is, is so cool. So, 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 Chloe, why the iguana, or was there something about the iguana itself that that caught your fancy? Uh, yes, I had seen uh, another taxidermied iguana at an antique store. I think that same year, and um, I wanted to buy it. And that one was only twenty five dollars, and it was prettier. I mean, it was like well done, um, but the owner of the store said it was on hold. And so I called back to, you know, she said, call back and check yeah. in a few days. And I did. And then she said she sold it. And so I, I, I felt like a loss. Yeah. Right, right. So I was like, well, I have to find another iguana. Right. Well, this one has a better story. This does have a better story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. That's so cool. Well, I think that's a good start for our recommendo show and tell. And um, uh, if you enjoyed us, let us know. There'll be some way to get back to us. I don't know if there's comments or email. I recommend though, we'd like to hear from you. Um, and um, we'll give us a try some other time. But thanks again yeah. for watching. Um, and until then, um, bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.